Hello and welcome to Larch Mountain American Community Television. I'm Mike Witch, and my guest today is Andy Cattell. Welcome, Andy. Hi, Mike. Uh, Andy, the League of Women Voters uh, image is behind us, and you've been going around the county delivering uh, wonderful uh, presentations about news, fake news, truth in news, and how to tell the difference. Uh, tell me a little bit about the foundation that supports this effort. Right. Well, the League is all about nonpartisan civics education, voter registration, awareness of issues, awareness of candidates. They host debates. And here in Westchester, the Countywide League undertook this program to combat fake news and help people to tell the difference between fake and real news uh, through a series of workshops. Primarily, we've been running them for the past year, continuing in 2020, uh, at public libraries, uh, although we are very much uh, interested in doing them for other groups, particularly young people, and we're in discussions to keep those going. I should say right off the bat that you've got two coming up in February. Uh, tell us about those. Sure. Yeah, on February 6th, a Thursday night at 7 p.m. at the White Plains Public Library. I live in White Plains, so it's local for me. Uh, we have a 90-minute workshop for the public. Anyone is invited. Uh, it's really best for high school students all the way up through seniors. Mm -hmm. um, and then a few days later, February 9th, a Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. at the North Castle Public Library, which is Arma in Armagh. Also 90 minutes. These are highly interactive and everyone's invited to come. We have even more on the calendar further out in the year. You could look at the League of Women Voters of Westchester's website mm -hmm. and uh, see the whole schedule there, which is constantly being updated. And I think on the website they call it dealing with disinformation. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the, the definitions well, first here. First I want to yeah. uh, let people know you're quite credentialed. I mean, when I saw you in the Marinick Library, I heard about your 39-year career. Uh, you're a seasoned journalist. You worked for the Associated Press. You were in Russia, I think, as a foreign correspondent. Mm -hmm. And you've been a corporate communications executive, so you've been around. Absolutely, and you know, it, all of my, both of my careers have been about information in one way or the mm -hmm. other. I, as you mentioned, was a foreign correspondent for the Associated Press during the Gorbachev period uh, in this, when it was the Soviet Union, and there were tons of information-related uh, themes, if you will. He introduced a policy of o openness for the Soviet Union to mm -hmm. come clean on a lot of previously taboo topics, which I then was able to cover as a foreign journalist. Uh, so that kind of sensitized me to information flow and transparency of government then. And then you had uh, the topic become even more relevant in the last presidential election. And that's when certain terms were thrown about, which uh, we're going to talk about, I'm sure. So you're retired from all that now? Yes, I am. But you're still keenly interested in it. So yes. let's jump right in. What, what do you mean by fake news? And by the way, I should tell viewers, we have some uh, full screen slides to illustrate what you're talking about. Right. So here's the definition of fake news that we are going to use today. Now, right. some people uh, define uh, fake news as any information that they do not like that may be critical of them or their policies. That's the latest iteration and it's coming from some very prominent uh, people in our society and not only in our society worldwide. Our definition today and for our workshops is what you see on the screen now, an intentional attempt to spread hoaxes or false information with the purpose of profit or influence. So that's really what we're focusing. It really boils down to what's true and what's false. Haven't there always been news media organizations, whether it's television, radio, or print, that lean left or lean right in yes. their presentation of yes. news? Yes, it, it, it's not a new phenomenon, fake news uh, and disinformation. There are other terms that have been used like propaganda. Government propaganda uh, was a big issue in the Cold War between the Soviet Union, USSR, and the United States. Uh, all of this has been exacerbated and facilitated and magnified and amplified by technology, specifically the internet and social media, because now any individual can have access to a mass audience, and that was not previously possible uh, pre-internet. And whether that person intends to convey true or false information, they still have access to that audience. There's no filter any longer. 
Tell me about the Stanford, uh, uh, before we get that, uh, talk about the uh, importance of facts in elections. We've got our national election coming up in November. We've also got local elections coming up in March, right. school elections in uh, May. Absolutely. So this, this as you're pointing out, uh, in a democracy, mm -hmm. the facts matter, or they should matter. And arming our citizens, including ourselves, with accurate information so that we can then know what position to take on policies, policies which candidates to support, which referendum, if there are referendum on the, referendums on the ballot, what's our position that should be based on the facts. So if we look at this chart coming up here, mm -hmm. uh, which was a survey, this is from the um, Stanford History Education exactly. Project. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, what is the biggest threat to keeping our elections safe and accurate? Look at the number one choice here. It's about information. Misleading information is a big problem. And this is a recent survey, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so uh, the importance of facts to a democracy cannot be overestimated. Uh, the students at this project had trouble differentiating between news stories and advertising. Right. So uh, another slide on this topic here, which is uh, the, there's a group of students whom, uh, who, who are surveyed periodically. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see on this slide here that it's recent, pretty recent uh, survey. 52% were shown a grainy video that mm -hmm. claimed to show ballot stuffing in the 2016 U.S. Democratic primaries. Okay. And that uh, video was used to show alleged evidence of U.S. voter fraud. But in okay. fact, that video was shot in Russia and propagated by the Russians. And uh, furthermore, of 3,000 responses from students who saw that video, only three of them actually took the time to do a quick internet search and then discovered that it was fake and fabricated. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, uh, two-thirds of those students couldn't tell the difference between news stories and advertisements even though the advertisements were labeled clearly as sponsored content. All right, and then 96%, think about how high a number mm -hmm. that is, uh, didn't consider why ties between a climate change website and the fossil fuel industry might lessen credibility of that website. So we have a lot of teaching to do and learning to do across the board at younger ages and seniors. By the way, other studies have shown that senior citizens are more gullible to false information and sharing it than young people are, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Now, as a senior maybe. myself, <laughs> I thought that I was pretty up on being able to tell fake from right. real. Right. But it, when I heard your presentation and when we are going to talk some more about this, you're going to explain why not. Right. Yeah. Um, you pose three questions that uh, yeah. should be asked. Right. Uh, whenever you come across information, especially right. online, right. what are those? Yeah, yeah. so uh, there are some uh, groups like the Stanford group we mentioned before. I'm also involved with the News Literacy Project, which is a national nonprofit on this issue. And they've come up with a few uh, you know, basic points. Mm -hmm. One, I would say, is when you're going to share something with your friends, you're, that means you are basically endorsing it. And they are your friends in part because they like you and they trust you. So if you share false information, they are much more likely to believe it themselves. So you should slow down, first of all, before sharing anyone, anything, and ask these three questions at least. Who is behind the information? What are the sources of that information? How credible are they? What's mm -hmm. the evidence? So somebody may be making a claim. Well, what's backing that up? What, claim, what claims are being, what's backing up the, the, the claims in terms of facts and data, if any? Um, and finally, what do other outlets say? So you may be reading it on one particular news outlet. Well, it would be a good idea to see if other news outlets are reporting it. If they're not, then there's a pretty good chance it was made up. And if they are reporting it, but in a different way with different facts, different evidence, then uh, you should take that into account before sharing it and before uh, deciding yourself whether to believe it or not. Now, you brought with you a clip uh, of, uh, it's a video clip of the uh, House uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Right. Uh, can you tell us what we're going to see? Sure. So let's. Or you just want us to see it first? No, no, and we then can tell set us. it up a little bit. So, okay. uh, fabricated news and false information has taken many forms in this sophisticated di digital age mm -hmm. with a lot of technology being applied uh, for good and for bad. 
Uh, one of the misuses of that technology for bad is manipulated video. Uh, literally putting words in somebody's mouths or changing the way their words come out. So now let's watch this video of Nancy Pelosi. Okay. And then he had a, a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals that obviously were planned long before I said most currently that he was engaged in a cover-up. However, compare that version to one from C-SPAN. And then he had a, a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals that obviously were planned long before I said most currently that he was engaged in a cover-up. In the Facebook video, it takes Pelosi 17 seconds to say that sentence. In the C-SPAN clip, she says it in 13, indicating that the viral social media version was... Doctored. <laughs> is with the word I would use. It was doctored up. Right. It was slowed down. Right. And it made her look. Right. What? How would you say? Uh, uh, unappealing at the very least. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And it erodes her credibility. And maybe suffering from some, some kind of. Yes, health issue. Yeah. Implication there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's kind of dangerous. That's uh, pretty scary. But when you consider how many videos are out there. Right and you don't know the provenance of it. Right, so one thing you can do, there are some websites and other tools, mm -hmm. we'll talk about it later, I'm sure, sure. but there's technology that can help us detect what they call uh, these fake or deep fake uh, videos. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a slide that you brought with you, I think it's the next one up, it's the uh, goals of lie spreaders? Yes. Okay, uh, so you know, somebody could ask the question, very legitimate question, why do people spread lies? What's, yeah. What are they trying to do? We said earlier that it's for profit or influence, uh, but sometimes they're not actually trying to get the audience to believe uh, the false information that they're putting out there. What they really are trying to do is what's on this screen in a lot of cases, not all cases. First of all, they want to barrage you with a lot of falsehoods. The facts, there's only one set of facts usually. Sometimes you can come up with, um, up with more evidence. But the number of times you can come up with falsehoods and lies is endless. It's only limited by the imagination of the human mind. Uh, so they can repeatedly barrage uh, you and, and all of us with that. They want to sow doubt. They just want to question what is reality or what the facts are. And that is what some what they're after. They want to basically fool us or trick us into believing something or simply to be confused. If they create confusion, that's success in a lot of their minds and complicate the issue. And the end result, which is super dangerous in a democracy where we need involved, engaged citizens, people who care, is that you say, I am so confused here, mm -hmm. so complicated, I give up. I don't care anymore, whatever, I'm moving on. I'm not even going to pay any more attention. Unfortunately, though, you cast a ballot for someone who may be guilty of this, or, or you, your information is based on something that is not true, and you, you wind up or that person winds up getting elected. Absolutely. Or a bad choice is made on right. a referendum right. because of uh, wrong information. Right, and the price of that has to be paid for years when someone is elected. Now, you also brought a, a kind of egregious example yeah. of doctored uh, images. Right. There's, right. Well, there's one of uh, the Trumps, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, mom and the president and his father. Right. And this was taken in 1999, I believe. Right, well that was what the original claim was, that it says 1999. This is an example of a doctored still image. We saw mm -hmm. Pelosi's uh, doctored video image right. earlier. So the question, this was on Twitter, okay, and mm -hmm. it was shared thousands and thousands of times. It probably is still on there. It purports to show uh, before he was President Donald Trump with his parents uh, wearing uh, what, the, what looks like Ku Klux Klan outfits. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next slide. The answer is no, that was not a real slide. It was doctored uh, photograph. And uh, there, this, his parents were wearing business attire. Okay, and here's the real photo, which actually was taken, I believe it was in 1994, so the date wasn't even correct. Mm -hmm. So an example of doctored imagery. Now, a bona fide uh, journalistic enterprise like yes. the New York Times or Wall Street Journal yes. or a magazine, they would look at that photo carefully and probably discern quickly that it's mm -hmm. been doctored. That's correct. And well, there are also tools that any of us can use called 
the uh, technique is called reverse image search. Oh. You can do it just on mm -hmm. Google. There's uh, one that we'll show later called Tin Eye, uh, that you put the, the URL to the photo in, in there, and mm -hmm. it will check it for you. Well, let's go to that slide. It's mm -hmm. uh, websites that detect fake news. Right. Okay. This is really important. Yeah. This, this everybody should print out or take a screenshot and write mm -hmm. it down and have it at their computer and mobile uh, to check stuff. Uh, and these are some really good uh, organizations uh, that, uh, that you see on the screen or we won't walk through all of them. Mm -hmm. They're doing a lot of the homework for us in terms of trying to check uh, the veracity of information out there, mm -hmm. including visuals. Yes, that tin eye reverse image checker. Right. Uh, I'd never heard of that. Right. And that's how to tell pictures? Yeah, I think it's just still images. I don't think it's video yet. What have been the reactions of the audiences that you've presented this to in the libraries? Well, uh, for one thing, uh, the workshops we've been doing are very interactive. I personally really legitimately want to hear from people what their concerns are about information, mm -hmm. where they get information, how they've been dealing with it. Uh, so for me, that's very helpful, and for people to hear it from each other. Yeah. Uh, they've been very interested in this. Uh, they really appreciate uh, the league's nonpartisan approach to it. We try as best we can to give examples of disinformation and fake news across the political spectrum. I'm not saying that we're perfect all the time, but it, our intent is to try to be as fair as possible in showing that. Well, the league has a, a reputation of, for fair and honest uh, sharing of information and looking to build a, an informed citizenry. Absolutely. So the foundation that supports this um, allows you to travel and others to travel around the libraries right now giving right. these presentations. Right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, I'm a volunteer. Everyone else in the league is as well. Um, and uh, we have a whole schedule, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, and it keeps getting populated with more. Um, I'm talking to one of the school districts in the county to do this uh, program, which we're calling News Literacy, uh, which is really part of civics education. And it crosses between social studies and English. Mm -hmm. uh, English sometimes has journalism associated with it. Uh, some of the high schools and certainly colleges uh, have journalism uh, classes or programs, and uh, this topic of news literacy r really crosses between the two of them. I'll just point out one, uh, SUNY Stony Brook on Long Island has something called the Center for News Liter Literacy, which well predates this latest uh, iteration of fake news, and they've done some really pioneering work for college students. Uh, some of my material comes from them, and I have visited them, great people there, great work, and uh, many years of experience trying to help people uh, sort through all this. For anyone watching this program who wants to contact you or make arrangements to hopefully bring you or some of this program into neighborhood schools, how do they do that? Right. Uh, the League of Women of Voters of Westchester's website is the best place, and we have email and a phone, phone, uh, phone line to, to, to call, and happy to hear from people. Uh, actually, I think you may have also appeared on LMC TV, interviewed by Dennis Rudin. That's right. Uh, I think it was earlier this year he did a, a longer right. interview with That's you. That's right, which is a good point, Mike, because I am yeah. constantly, constantly updating the, the uh, presentation and the information that I use to educate folks. For better or for worse, every single day there are new examples of fake news, but there are also some new ways almost every day of how to fight it, some new technologies and techniques. Any parting words before uh, we sign well, off? Well, just the importance of the topic. Everyone should slow down when they're getting barraged with information. Check it out before sharing it. Be more careful. And also teach other people, your kids, and tell other you know, peers of yours. And you're all welcome to come to the workshops where we're going to go into everything we've talked about today in much more detail with more examples and your opportunity to speak up as well in Westchester County coming up this year. And the next one is February 6th? Yes, White Plains. In White Plains Library, yeah. and then February 9th right. in Armonk. You got it. Okay. Andy Cattell, thank you so much for coming on, and thank you also, uh, and thanks to the League for doing the series of workshops. It's uh, so important. Thanks. Thanks for being our guest. Thank you.